Well, good day, and welcome to the Marin County Fire Chief's Historical Website. This is the Marin Fire History Group, and my co-host today is retired Fire Chief Bill Ellis. And we'd like to touch base on our um, accomplishments and our pro projects that we did in 2022 as we uh, wrap up uh, wrap up the year. Uh, good day, Bill. Good day. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Bill. I think uh, why don't you and I chat a little bit about 2022 and uh, and the fun we had together? I think that sounds like a winning idea. Okay, okay. great. Well, I remember uh, the first part of the year, you and I started talking about Green Bray and Green Bray Station, the fire station in back of you, and we talked about the old Green Bray Dairy. Yes. And then um, you put together a beautiful piece about the Green Bray Fire Department. Yeah, yeah, that was my uh, that was my second home. Uh, Greenbury Station opened. Uh, it was a one man station, and the rig that's behind me, the squad, was the first out rig. And uh, we've ha we've had people drive through that the uh, drive through the the doors, the, the apparatus doors into the living room. Uh, a guy left the Chevron station and drove through, and uh, well, unfortunately. Uh, the captain on duty had just stepped away to go into the kitchen and uh, he would have been injured since really so. And the guy had um, been, his license had been suspended. He's about 89 years old. His license had been suspended about six times. Well, so, but, well and, 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 but you took it all the way back from the very first uh, Greenbury Volunteer Fire Department. And then we talked a little bit about the Schultz family and their um, donation of the land of the city of Larkspur. And we built that station there. Yeah, that's correct. That, that, that lot that the station on was uh, uh, along the main drain from the Green Bray Hills. Right. Uh, between the Shell Station and the station and went out to the, out to the, the Court of Madera Creek. Um, and it was uh, uh, when they decided to develop the hill behind us, um, they uh, filled in, uh, put in a 10-foot culvert to the creek. And uh, at, one, at one time when it flooded, the big storm of 80... 83, I guess it was, uh, station uh, two at the time had uh, about two and a half feet of water in it for about three days. Wow. Wow. Well, well speaking of on the water, uh, the month after we did the Greenbrae piece, I wandered out to Tamales. And of course, they're on the, the very western tip of uh, uh, the, the Marin County Peninsula, if you will. And uh, it was a really fun experience for us. Uh, we talked about the old Tamales Volunteer Fire Department, uh, how the 1906 earthquake that devastated San Francisco also uh, was caused a lot of damage out in Tamales. And we were able to um, talk with the historical folks out there about how Tamales became uh, the town it is. At one time, it was considered to be, it was considered for the um, county seat of Marin County. But, and today, yep, the county seat. Now there's, today there's a, uh, a beautiful uh, Marin County Fire Department fire station there. And they are the one agency still in Marin County that has a uh, support group of volunteers that are very, very active. And they court, that's the only, um, it's the only Marin County station, Marin County Fire Department station that has an active group of volunteers uh, still today. Yeah, so that was an exciting trip, walk down memory lane there. Yeah, that's very rare I mean, in today, 2022, to have a, a volunteer incorporated with the paid department. No? I, I always question, why would that have been the county seat? It doesn't have direct access to the bay, like San Rafael, mm -hmm. close to the Pacific Ocean on you know, I mean, there could have been a harbor there or something like that, but to make it the county seat in 06 is, uh, you know, I mean, not maybe 06, but prior to 06. Sure. Uh, county seat is, well, you know. the, the railroad ran through there and it was, uh, they did a lot of commerce. I mean, the dairies were out there. They produced a lot of eggs out there. Um, it was, there was a lot of um, high profile folks um, in, in, uh, Agricultural commerce, you have to remember, um, there wasn't a lot in Marin County in, in the 
beginning of the 20th century, and that was uh, that was considered for the uh, for the county seat just because of the uh, high value agriculture and the uh, access to the rail line. That makes sense. That makes yeah. Sense. Yeah. Now, when you and I uh, talked about this and we're very excited about this, uh, when we started in 2022 was Families in Fire, Bill. Yeah, that was a great idea you came up with. I, 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 uh, I think it's been, I think it's been very successful. I think uh, a lot of the viewers uh, enjoy it, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it. Uh, I'm hoping sometime maybe next year, my, me and my son will do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's been um, very well received, and it's been fun. It's been really fun, and and you know, we did four four families in 2022. I'd love to do sit down with you and do four more in, you know, 2023. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, talk about uh, things our viewers really enjoy. Or I think uh, one of their high, high points um, would be uh, when we do the old fire engines, when we do the old antiques yes. and um, you and, and Aaron Reed and Steve Warner met down at station 20 at the uh, Sleepy Hollow station and did a beautiful uh, walkthrough of that Fairfax's um, Seagrave fire engine. Now that was, uh, that Seagrave engine is a, uh, well, they're all beautiful pieces of equipment, but the Seagraves was really neat because it was totally Seagraves. It was, the nozzles were Seagraves, the ladders were Seagrave. And over the years, like that piece of apparatus, those things kind of get taken away and cannibalized. And, but uh, they have a wonderful piece of history there. And I'm hoping, I know they were having troubles getting a starter so they could drive it, but I think the, if I'm not mistaken, the, the show that we put together kind of um, simulated the people in Fairfax. The I think it did stimulate them. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking to see that thing driving down the street. I'm oh, that's a great that's a great old piece. That really is. And and um, after that, um, we kind of got our we kind of got our motor going a little bit because. We got excited after doing the Seagrave and um, the folks at Larkspur Central Marine Fire were um, very, very helpful in in um, pulling out that Larkspur's old Model T. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the Model T, as as it stands now, is the oldest motor, uh, piece of fire apparatus in Marin County. Uh, wow. That's when we took delivery of it. It really is a 1915 um, a Ford Model T parts. And that's how it came, came out in, on the train and was assembled in San Anselmo. And technically, as as you can see in the, uh, in the film, it's very active. It's, uh, it almost looks like the day it came out of San Anselmo into Larkspur. They, they did a, I'll tell you what, the association did a wonderful job of, of preserving that. Because yeah. so many of the pieces of equipment um, yeah. wind up wind up gone, and once they're lost, they're lost forever. Bill, it, it, it had its history. It came to Larkspur, we gave the soul of Kentfield. It became a sawmill, at mm -hmm. the and uh, at the time, Captain Craig Shears of Larkspur uh, was given the assignment <clears throat> to look at the parts. He found all the parts. Uh, he put it pretty much put it back together in a skeleton format. And then the, the uh, volunteers took it on, and what you see now is uh, a lot, over a hundred years worth of uh, love and labor. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And then something that's near and dear to your heart. Um, we were talking about history and how we tie what we do today into our history, our our history as the fire service as a whole. And you did another excellent job of putting together um, a story, um, how the 19, 1666, a Great London Fire yeah. gave uh, rise to organized fire companies and fire prevention codes. And because before that, you, you know, the, there was no really organized fire equipment and or fire companies and fire equipment. And as you were pointed out, we burned down a lot of our cities in 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 Europe a number of times before before we 
before the, the, the finally got organized and put fire departments together and then the fire prevention codes. And for anybody that's interested in how we got to where we are today, you did an excellent uh, presentation. Yeah, it was, uh, well, I th in, in my opinion, it's it, the, the, the 1622, uh, uh, the 16 is the, uh, is the birth of what we call now the modern fire department uh, training manuals, of fire prevention, and the hiring of fire chief and tra a training officer and so forth. So if you want to go back, that's where it all began in London. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we jumped ahead. We had a, talked about emergency communications. And when you started in the business, Bill, we talked about how the, the you know you call the seven digit number or eight digit number um for for uh there was no 911 you had to call each each fire department on the landline and the larger cities with some of the smaller ones um had the game well boxes and we did a nice piece on the game well boxes uh, last year and then we took at the evolution we took a look at the evolution of immune emergency communications and we did a two piece on that. And, you know, we saw, you saw from the early, early days of the, the, of the speaking trumpet all the way up to that great interview you did with uh, Battalion Chief Barnes in Southern Marin. Yeah, I, uh, I was so impressed with Chief Barnes and his knowledge of the computer aids dispatching system, where it is now and uh, more important where it's going. Oh boy! Is, you imagine it, and I think it can happen almost with, with the invention, the reinvention of the chip, and all of that material. That's it's coming down. And it'll be, as I said, you know, you go, when I first started this program thing, it was a, I used uh, Dick Tracy as a uh, <laughs> Dick Tracy cartoon back in the thirties and forties. He could talk on his wrist radio. Right. Hey. Came to came to be I, I i always think about that now it's a telephone a wristwatch a compass you know next thing it'll be television you'll be able to look at your wrist and see a football game right Let's go. It's, I, it's, it, uh, it we 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 and I'm, I'm i'm glad we do this because we talk about the evolution of these things like you said in the 20s and the 30s uh the buck rogers and the dick tracy's were just a, a figment of somebody's imagination and here we are in the 21st century, and a lot of this has come to fruition. It's reality. It really is. And when you started in the business, I know not all the fire apparatus had radios in it. No, we didn't. No, we had to run. Uh, One-way radio, talk to dispatch, comp center. We called the comp center up in San Rafael on 4th Street. And if if they got the message, we'd turn on the AM radio. And he would respond, and we'd listen to it on AM radio. I think, Paul, if anything, the next, I think the next thing coming down the pike is going to be drones, if drones to be used in the wildland interface uh, more than Cal Fire and Con Fire and Marin County will have them. But mm -hmm. I think that's probably going to be the next advancement in fire suppression. I, you know, I think you're right. When you and Chief Barnes were talking about uh, uh, fire activity and how the incident commander can manage the fire um there they currently they have a, a fleet of manned aircraft and he said absolutely the next step is going to be the unmanned aircraft that can relay the information from the sky directly to the incident commander um and to me it's it's amazing it, it, the technology is so is so amazing it's so cool i think i think the unmanned aircraft is going to replace that well, helicopter drops and maybe even the big, the big uh, chemical drop uh, apparatus. Time. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Only time will tell. Now, um, I think our last big um, couple of couple of um, programs we presented in 2022 that was really super fun for you and I to do was um, when when we met with Dr. Stephen Mizrock. Oh, yes. And he gave us uh, two interviews. The first one was, of course, the history of the San Rafael Fire Commission that we had very little knowledge about. And there's not a whole lot of 
uh, talk about the Santa Fe Fire Commission. You know, they started when the city started. And the second part of, of his interview was with the shoulder patches, with the fire department patches in his collection. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, and being a guy who collects fire stamps from around the world, and to see that he had over 6,000 patches just from California it was a pretty impressive number. And uh, uh, it, it, is, it is a beautiful collection. It, re it really is. And his time with the Center Fell Fire Commission, um, you know, I, I think the doctor spent about 20 years on the fire commission. And uh, they rolled the uh, fire commission. I believe they were the organization that started the Center Fell Fire Foundation. And uh, Fire Foundation has provided um, support to the fire department, um, which is good to see. It's great. It's really good to see. And then, of course, with Dr. Stephen uh, Mizrock and his patches, uh, absolutely, Bill, you were, um, we were both impressed. We were both impressed. The, the depth of his knowledge and the different styles and things on, about the patches, typically we don't think about. And he also encouraged you know, the newer firefighters to to collect if if that was something they'd like to do. Uh, I uh, just as a side note, I I work currently work for the fire. I'm the fire marshal here at Rodeo Hercules over in Con Fire, Monte Costa County, and the fire the main firehouse has got uh, large large displays and patches throughout the day room. So it's mm -hmm. very, very popular um, activity for the guys to do. You know, it's a nice way to meet one another, share patches, exchange patches, and so forth. So, Paul, I guess I think next year we got some nice looking stuff coming down for them. We hope that we got uh, a new engine coming out. We hope a new engine, a 19, an engine out of San Quentin. We hope to make a display on mm -hmm. and pop them from Larkspur. Uh, we hope to get to. What else you got on the, 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 on on the, the plate? Well, um, I think our family's in fire has been uh, really, um, really fun to do. And uh, we put a survey out last month that's still available for our, for our viewers. And actually, I think that was not my idea, Families in Fire, but one of our, um, one of our viewers uh, suggested, hey, maybe you guys should do uh, a piece on different generations in the fire service. So that's kind of where that took off from. So we'll do some Families in Fire. And I'm also um, hopeful to get to the uh, Larkspur Historical Room and take a look at some of their items. And um, then uh, uh, we've been putting together for our viewers for 2023, we've been putting together an outline of uh, the Southern Marin Fire Departments. And it's just a concept now, Bill, but we'd really like to take a look at the history of the Southern Marin Fire Departments and everything from Homestead Valley to Sausalito to um, uh, Alto Richardson Bay and see how those departments have evolved and uh, consolidated to the 21st century because the geography is the same in Southern Marin, but the uh, boundaries of the fire agencies have really uh, significantly changed in the last 10 years and beyond. So that will be fun to do. We'll capture the history of the Southern Marin Fire Departments. Uh, looking forward to it myself. I'm I'm looking to force some of these programs. So. And it'll be fun. It'll be fun. And um, like I say, that survey that we put out last month is still available for um, folks. If you'd like to send some comments in and fill it out, we we appreciate that. And we appreciate being sponsored by the Marin County Fire Chiefs Association. And uh, you and I with the Marin Fire History Group and our our producer Dan White. Uh, Thank you very much for a great 2022, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody in 2023. Yeah, you guys be safe out there. Take care. Absolutely. Paul. Hello, I'm Chief Ruben Martin with the Marin County Fire Chiefs Association. As sponsors of the Marin Fire History Group, we would like to acknowledge their dedication this past year. The Marin Fire History Group had an active 2022 documenting the people and antique fire apparatus in the county. This year, they continued their popular series on families and fire, as well as reported on evolution of fire communication as they proceeded to document and preserve our Marin County fire history. 
We wish them success as they strive to continue their undertakings in 2023.